Well, hello there and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bocor for this episode. Hey, Happy New Year. Hope everybody has a safe new year. We're going to get through this. 2021 is going to be a much better year than 2020. Believe me, things are looking up. Just got to hang tight for several more months till we get through the pandemic, but it is happening. And it's going to be a good year from an EV perspective. So that's what I want to focus on on today's show. Focus on what is 2021 going to look like? So what does 2021 look like? Well, if we look at the numbers for this year that are trending up, they're not out yet, but it looks like we'll finish somewhere around 2.9 to 3.1 million units, which will be great going into 2021. So for this year, will EV adoption, will it be, will it explode? Will it be slow and steady? Well, there's kind of like four main drivers that are continuing to fuel the electric vehicle industry. Electric vehicles, particularly Teslas, are already more competitive in certain market segments. The tech transitions that led to the electric vehicle market of today will continue in the coming decade, certainly into this year and beyond. EV sales should rise quicker, outperforming most people's current expectations, but still taking a very long time to replace internal combustion vehicles globally. Remember folks, there's a lot of vehicles that are out there around the planet. And I believe that Tesla will continue to lead the market due to their core competitive advantages for this year. Now, the electric vehicle market of today seems unbelievably gigantic in the context of 2010 expectations, if we look back 10 years ago, as that market was basically non-existent at that time. Almost zero market analysts or investors were on the lookout for a promising EV startup. And you couldn't find one person out of a hundred, maybe not even one out of a thousand, or even one out of a million, who expected that an electric car company or an electric car would be the best-selling automobile in some notable country and regional markets by 2020. And chances are good that you did not predict that a Silicon Valley automaker would be outselling BMW, Mercedes, and Audi in the United States in the all-prized luxury car market. Now, a big impact on the EV market has been, and in my opinion, continues to be Tesla, especially with the Model 3 can't be underestimated how important this vehicle has been. This one vehicle has had more than twice as many sales as the second best-selling automobile in the Netherlands. In the USA, it significantly outsold all other luxury vehicles, and in fact, the Model 3 has been outselling the BMW 2 Series, 3 Series, 4 Series, and 5 Series combined. It's quite a feat. And just as the past 5 to 10 years surprised the majority of the market, I believe that these next five to 10 years will continue to surprise the majority of the market. Things will again change much faster than people thought possible. The technology has not stopped improving. The costs have not stopped dropping. So it's all good. If we look at recent sales numbers, plug-in vehicles accounted for approximately 2% in, of global uh, vehicle sales in 2019. And right now they look to finish at about 4% for 2020. So that is a doubling. Now, some are predicting that this market share will continue to double every year to get to about 60% by 2029. Well, I believe in reality things don't quite work this way. And even the Tony Sebas and others of the world, I don't think that that's going to happen because we will continue to see steady growth as long as more models are introduced, incentives stick around for at least another few years, and cost parity occurs by mid-decade. However, ICE fees, or internal combustion vehicles, have been around for over a hundred years. Don't forget that. And they're not going away anytime soon. There are hundreds of millions of them out there. I still think it will take a couple of decades before we see the majority of the world's automotive fleets become electric. Now, some automakers have already uh, expressed public electrification goals. For example, Volkswagen Group intends for 25% of its sales to be electric by 2025. They've committed to producing 1 million or even more EVs per year by that time. I believe Tesla should hit about 2 million or more per year by, by mid-decade, at the pace that they're going. And Volvo aims for 50% of its sales to be electric by 2025. And GM, Ford, Renault, FCA, Mitsubishi, Nissan, and most of the major OEMs have also stated big intentions for more electrification. So, for 2021, what new EVs should we see come out this year? 
Well, if we look at the major OEMs, we've got Audi with the e-tron GT and the Q4 e-tron SUV. We've got BMW with their i4 sedan and the iX3 SUV. Ford with the Mach-E, that's basically started deliveries, and hopefully the F-150 electric pickup truck. And we might even see the e-transit work van from Ford come out this year. GMC has committed to the electric Hummer and the Bolt EUV, which is another compact SUV. And Mercedes-Benz has the EQA crossover, the EQC SUV for USA and Canada, and the EQS sedan. And Nissan has the Aria SUV that they've committed to relaunch this year. And Volkswagen Group, of course, with the VW ID4, their compact SUV. Now, there are others that we will uh, see hit uh, showrooms or hit driveways. Byton's m bite is scheduled for this year. It's their SUV. Lordstown Motors with the Endurance pickup truck. Lucid Motors with their Air Sedan series. And Rivian with the R1T pickup truck and the R1S SUV. To summarize, 2021 should be a great year for EVs. We should see continued plug-in sales growth globally. And my early take and my early estimates on the numbers, I think we'll finish in the 3.5 to 3.8 million units sold for this year. Will we see all-important cost parity in 2021? Not a chance, folks. In my opinion, that's still a few years away. I'd love to see it, but it's not going to happen. All right, and that's it for this edition of the EV Revolution Show. A little shorter take on my look on 2021 and this decade. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching on YouTube. I appreciate everybody subscribing and they're putting in their comments. If you haven't subscribed, please do. It's important. And again, always humble thanks to my Patreon supporters. You know who you are. Your names come up at each and at the end of each and every show. So stay around for that. It's going to be an interesting year. And of course, everybody needs to stay safe. Continue to follow public health guidelines. We will get through this. We're getting close. And until the next show, when I'll have some more news to report on, please everybody continue to stay safe and I'll see you when I see you. Take care and bye-bye.